is the celebrity patron of the Canadian Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, which okay. didn't guarantee me anything. I still had to send her the manuscript for her But she very approval, graciously but, wrote, yeah. wrote a foreword for you, and that was very nice. She did. And the other thing that's very exciting is that, um, that it's been optioned for film by Eva Longoria's production company, yeah. but she doesn't want to be in it. She's going to she be wants, a producer. Apparently the next step in her career is to serious, be a producer. serious producing. And, and how that came about was also, um, you know, it's, it's one of the things that Pam taught me was really to be fearless. Um, so I'm sort of a darn the torpedoes kind of gal. Oh, um, no, that you have to be. That you especially have to in be. publishing. But I had kept a list of uh, celebrities who were also well siblings thinking I might write a book about celebrities who were well siblings. And it came to my attention that um, Well Eva, siblings meaning uh, that they had... A well child growing up with growing a, up a in disabled the family, child. With a disabled yeah. child, okay. It came to my attention that Eva was the youngest of four sisters and that her oldest sister was mentally disabled. I see. So when I was going to promote the book, when it came out in the U.S. Uh, just a few months ago, I wrote letters to the managers mm -hmm. of each of these celebrities and gave sent them a book and basically saying I'd like to go on national television and talk about well sibling issues and you're a well sibling we have that in common would you be willing to come and sure help and, me promote and it, it ended up her deciding to option the film and, rights and only one person got back to me and that was Eva's manager within a week and he didn't even talk about going on TV, he immediately said, uh, I'd like you to send me a copy. I think Eva should read it. And uh, Well, when you when, when she then produces the movie, you said they're looking at it for Hallmark Channel and... Right. It's under consideration right now at Hallmark and, and, and Lifetime. Lifetime. So when somebody decides to go ahead and produce it, then you can go on TV with, with Eva Longoria and discuss it. I See? hope so. I hope so, too. I hope, I hope so, too. That's very exciting. Um, I'm going to ask you to, oh, well, before we do that, I wanted to ask you, what are you working on now? Because I read this, and I'm like, if, if this is a, a one-hit wonder, I'm going to shoot myself, because this is so beautifully written. Thank you. So it's like you, you and, and something your sister said to you, you know, in the book was, you were meant to write. This is what you need to do. You need to be a writer. So, um, so you're not off the hook yet. I'm not. You have to keep and my writing. And my agent happens to think, that w when I first sat down with the, the woman who became my agent to talk to her, she said, I'm not here just to talk to you about this book. I want to talk to you about your career. And I went, I came home and said to my husband, I have a career. Who knew? Um, so uh, she's pushing me to write a novel, and that's what I'm doing. Um, the working title is called The Testing Tree from the poem mm -hmm. by Stanley Kunitz. And um, I love metaphor and Yes, I know that yes. you like metaphor because and it's throughout, throughout your novel, the book, um, I mean, your, your memoir. My river, my river metaphor in there. Uh, so it's about it's about a family tree. It's about a mother, a grandmother, a daughter, and um, and the the man um, who comes in and screws it all up. That's them. that's what you write. <laughs> I say the, the fiction is Am the I allowed art. To say that? No, I say <laughs> fiction is the art of finding out what your character's worst case scenario is yeah. and then doing it to them. Yeah. Yes. Now I can see that we're coming to near the end of our, our time already. Can you believe it? Gosh. And I'm going to ask you if you could read an excerpt from uh, from Sixty Five Roses. I'd love to for for our audience. Thank you. Um, so uh, there is a river metaphor in this book, which will explain this passage a bit. This is near the end, and um, when I was uh, finishing writing the book and I had a conversation with my sister one afternoon in the backyard looking up at the sky, and I said, I know there's something left that I haven't said that you really want me to say, and this is what came to me. How do we know when something is over, when a love affair or a marriage ends, when it's time to move on from a dream that isn't coming true? When you've given all you can to something or someone and taken all that's going to be offered and there isn't any more. What instinct tells us that it's time to stop fighting? What kind of courage does it take to face that truth? When the river meets the sea, it broadens and slows. Rivers like the Mississippi have deltas, muddy fingers fanning out, reaching for the open water beyond. 
The Hudson River expands, surrendering wholly to the embrace of the Atlantic Ocean, waiting just beyond the Verrazzano Narrows Bridge. Pam was ready to surrender, but not ready, no, never ready, to give up. She understood the difference, as I am only beginning to understand. Giving up implies there's still some fight left, some unfinished business or unrealized potential that's being tossed aside. It's a closing off of the heart and mind, a shrinking of the soul. Giving up takes back all we have given and fashions a vessel in which to carry regret. Surrendering means we know we have done all we can do. There is compassion in surrender, both for ourselves and the thing we leave behind. It is an offering, a gift. There is forward movement in surrender, an opening of the heart and mind, an expanding of the soul. We broaden and slow, fingers fan out, reaching for the open water and the embrace of the unknown. Giving up is an act of anger or despair. Surrender cannot be accomplished without love. <laughs> I, I've got to, you know, I, re I read this um, just in the last few days because you had sent me a copy and my brother had picked it up. And you were laughing, you were saying, well, there's two women on the two cover. Little, two girls on the front, yeah. Yeah, but he, he's, an, he's a very voracious reader, so I, had to, I was hunting for it. I'm like, where's my book? I have to read my book before my guest comes on. It was like, oh, you have my book. Give me that. But he enjoyed it very much, too. And he, he's also going to be very pleased to, to hear that you're, you're working on a novel as well. Terrific. Thank you. you. Know, and and it won't take me 20 years, I promise. You promise? <laughs> you prom what's your, so what's your writing process like now? Are you, do you write every day? Um, I, I write pretty much every day. I try to stay connected with it on some level. My uh -huh. life's very peripatetic, and we travel a lot because I have an actor for peripatetic. a husband. Peripatetic. I don't think we've used that word on the show before. Well, my, my husband's you an actor. You are a lover of words, I aren't am. you? And, and, uh, and I'm my husband's roadie, so quite often I have to stop writing to, as I'm doing right now, because we're leaving for Ireland for uh, three your, months. Your husband's roadie? Yeah, he's an actor. So, okay. So he goes on location, and I... I do the packing and schlepping and the it's, unpacking. So and so now you're going to Ireland. So we're going to Ireland because uh -huh. he's uh, going to work at uh, the Gate Theater in Ireland for three months. And what 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 city is that in? The Gate Dublin. Theater in Dublin. Mm -hmm. Well, this will be an adventure it for will. you. It will. It will. And um, is the is the book um, available in the UK? No. Not yet. Not but yet. Maybe by the time I'm through with Ireland, it will be. So you live in the United States now. You live in. I, I live in West New York, New Jersey. Uh -huh. I emigrated to the U.S. in 1983 mm -hmm. and lived in New York for um, 15 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, now we live within sight of New York. We we look at Manhattan from our balcony. I see. I, and I, I will try to, hopefully I can get you to send me some of the images from the book, because I'd probably like to put a few of those up, too, because the images, the pictures that you have available in the book are, I said, the, the era. You yeah. know, I'm looking at these, and it could be my family that we were looking at in these pictures, and it could be so many of our viewers' families that this, you know, that I, I don't want people to read this and say, well, we already know the girl dies, so this is going to be too sad. Oh, no, it's not a is, march to the sea. This is an no. uplifting book. This is a book that, that you're really going to, to, to enjoy, and I hope that our, our readers you. will, will, will uh, find out more about it. And they can go to your website mm -hmm. and find out more about it, and I'll put that that up so that they can find out about mm -hmm. that. And I would also, if uh, any of our guests would like to be a guest on So Many Books, you should go to my website, that's www.tonyandrews.com, and you can uh, go to the Contact Me link and send me an email and tell me a little bit about yourself and about your book, and I'll be in contact with you. And I want to thank you once again very much thank for you coming very on the show. Much. I've enjoyed and it. I've enjoyed it a great deal. sharing of say talking about my feelings that I am able to reach even one person to get them thinking and realizing that they too have a lot to share but we, you have to open yourself up to it and take a risk of um, saying how you feel that it's more likely to 
help somebody than to hurt somebody. <laughs>